I'm hanging out. Will you ever play Bandle again? Yes. When did you first notice your bald spot? Well, ask Chad because they noticed this first. What are your dreams about? My dreams are always the same. I talked about this on stream. In the last years, my dreams are always the same. My dreams are always... Oh, I can literally get... I can't explain that very specific. My dreams is always about the time I was 8th to 10th grade. There's always the same characters recurring, certain people I, I, I knew in school, but only certain, like handpicked. Like five, go five people, which is kind of my friends, and sometimes girls. For example, my first ever girlfriend is often in my dreams. I, I dream about these people very often. That happens very often to me. And the dream is always the same. I'm in school. This is literally a dream I have probably like three times a week. I'm in school. With the class, right? Blah, blah, blah. And people kind of look down on me like Tommy is stupid. Like, it wasn't real life. And every time in my dreams, there's a situation where the whole class uh, um, shits on me. Like, the, the teacher says, why didn't you do the... Uh, 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 um, how do you say English? Why didn't you do the... The mission, the mission of the mission of the class. You know what I mean? Why, why do you do this? Why do you do that? Blah blah blah. It's all an assignment, homework. The whole class shits on me. Mostly, there's always recurring character. I can't even name them. I'm not gonna. But one of them was my. Two of them was my best friends back then, who I think were always not really my friends. They always didn't like me deep inside. And and my my first ever girlfriend. And I, I think what I'm what my dreams are doing. I wonder why I have them lately though, like for years now. Is um it's trauma. It's trauma, like a little mini trauma, about that these people were like fake or something, whatever. But here's the point now. Here's the point. And here it becomes here it becomes very arrogant. Here it becomes where I'm an arrogant cunt. Uh, we're doing one hour of squats and then sleep. Here comes uh, the arrogant stuff. Oh shit. Oh yes, baby. Oh yes. Show that uh, corner who's boss. And here comes the point now. In my dreams for years now is that I'm in a situation where people shit on me, but lately in this dream, the plot twist is that I have a really big mouth then. Like my dreams are like this. I'm sitting in class and the teacher's like, Tommy, you suck, you'll never be anything, you're an idiot, and the whole class like, ah, ha, 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 Tommy. And lately, for two years now, my dream is that I do this. Hey, listen, you fucks, you can all suck it. You wanna get smacked? Fuck you. You all suck. I'm much cooler than you. That That's my dream. <laughs> I dream that almost every night, man. My whole class, like 8th grade. It's, it's not 11th grade or 6th grade. Very interesting. It's always like 8th, 9th grade. They shit on me and I'm like, fuck all of you, huh? You want to fight? Fuck you, man. You little bitches. That's, that's my dream lately. <laughs> I dreamed it. <laughs> it's very funny. And then like two times a month, I have a really heavy nightmare, like really heavy. Like I really wake up. Ooh. Sometimes, yeah. Eighth to ten class was very, uh, was pregnant. Mm. Yeah. They don't know I'm top 1000 age vampires. And then when age vampires was new, I literally dreamt age vampires games. I was dreaming what I should do and how to play and stuff. True story. Have I had lucid dreams? I have them very often. Sigma male outfit. <laughs> I think what my brain is doing is that I have trauma from my teens. Because I think that 90% of people that I were around me when I was a teen were fake friends. And nowadays my brain is coping with that by saying, fuck all of you. You all suck. And you can suck it or something. I don't know. Something like that. Who knows? Do you miss Enderol? No. It was good, but now it's over. Why were there fake friends? Thank you, Saloma. Oh man, uh, how to explain? In the last years of school, I kind of had four friends. Mirhat, Christian, Michael, and another Christian. Everybody in Germany is named Christian. And and we're gonna finish here now. I'm gonna stop it here. And and Christopher. And I had six friends, right? And Christopher. Christopher was a cool guy, but he was weird. He was like, you know, if you had a yearbook, uh, he would be closest to do a school shooting. He was really weird. He listened to fucked up rap. Like, he listened to rap, which was like, I take her and I cut off her head and I, I fuck her corpse and make her kid sad. He always listened to music like this. 
uh, and everybody hated him. He, he, the whole, the whole school hated him. But I liked him because he was real. At least he was real, you know. I was good friends with him, and he would always talk about fucking Gears of War. Mm, Gears of War, man. Uh, that was Christopher, and I. He, everybody hated him. I liked him because he was real, you know. He was like a cool guy. That was Christopher. Then. And here you see where my trauma comes from. Let's have a little story time and then I play Hoi 4. Then we have uh, Mishael. Mishael was a friend for a long time. We always hang out, but Mishael truly hated me from the bottom of his heart. He lived around the corner. He also had a poor family. He wasn't the richest. But Mishael always... He wasn't actually poor. Think about it. He always had what I wanted. He had all the video games. He had a good gaming PC. And I remember it's so crystal clear. When World of Warcraft came out and I played it 2002, 2003... Uh, I was such a noob at World of Warcraft. I was a complete idiot kid, right? I was just a monkey and he he was raiding He had the f he was a troll hunter I remember and he had the full tier 2 set from Blackwing Lair and I would be so jealous to him and I would always Because um, I was such a fucking I was like a kid from an asocial poor family I would always uh, uh, Lend myself games from him and he hated that like I, I was actually, if I'm if I'm being real, I was a cunt to him. Like he would uh, lend lend me a GTA San Andreas, and I would give it back after a month with like a scratch. Uh, I was kind of an asshole, but this guy always hated me. He always despised me. And later, then later in school, he was really open. He was like, "Dude, fuck Tom, uh, fuck that kid." He hated me. That was him. Then we have, uh, I have to keep these two for later. Who else? No, why why am I doing? No, it was like three more, three more. Yeah, yeah. And now three more. Well, there was Tony. Tony was a good friend. Tony, who's now my second editor. And alhamdulillah, I mean this shit. I'm that serious. That's the point. I show you my six friends from back in the day. And only one of them was a real loyal boy. And that guy is now my second editor. He's making money. He's going to make more money. And as always, I believe in this shit. You have to be loyal to your people, man. Tony was the only real friend I had in school. And now I'm going to take Tony and pull him up and make him rich as a second editor, man. That, that's, that's what people do for each other, man. That guy never judged me. Tony is was always very a famous guy in school. He was he won uh, coolest guy of the year at the end. Like the the girls were into him, blah blah blah. He was a cool guy, right? And he was still cool to me. He didn't treat me differently, man. And now I'm putting Tony up. That's what people do. So there were three people left. Let's start with Mirhat, the Balkan boy. Mirhat was the best friend of my life. Uh, we were in kindergarten together. We were everywhere. Kindergarten, grad school. I was with Mirhat for uh, uh, 19 years. I was with him. And Mirhat is, was a Bosnian immigrant kid. They were Bosnian Muslims. And I was really close to them. I would always chill with his family and stuff. Really cool family. They were immigrants. And his dad is now a millionaire. He worked his ass off as an engineer. And um, me and Mirhat were always very close. Really, really close. But the thing was that later in school, he started to stop being a nerd and he became a really cool kid. He was going tall, he knew martial arts, he was good looking, he got all the bitches, you know, and all the cool kids started hanging out with him. So slowly, and I don't blame him, Mirhat was becoming part of the cool kids and kind of left me, which was okay, that's okay. But Mirhat fucked up last year. Mirhat, my Balkan boy, we will always stay connected. Every 4th and 7th of April, which is mine, his birthday, we will text each other on WhatsApp, right? And Mirhat was really cool, man. He will randomly come to your house and be like, Hey, come out, redhead! He will just randomly come and be like, Come on, Tommy, let's have a drink and smoke and have a nice evening. He will unannounce, right? And I always liked that with him. And we were always very close. And every year, for, for 29 years, we will uh, talk to each other on our birthdays. And last year... Last year, I texted him, Hey, Mirhat, how you doing, man? Happy birthday. I hope you're doing well. How's life? And he just he just cut me off, man. He was just, yeah, yeah, shut up. And I remember he sent me a picture of his work, and he's like a high-level engineer now. And he was like sending me a picture of his how he's designing pipes. And I'm like, bro, what's up? And he was, and I'm like, bro, we have to meet soon. And he just says, yes, yes, boom, gone, man. Uh, so that was that. Uh, then two more. Wow. The two Christians, man. Thank you, Bambus Affe. And these guys were really big friends for me, too. And this is where all this trauma comes from. There's the two Christians. Let's start with Christian number one. One of the Christians was a metalhead. He was a metaler. I always felt me and him were really good friends. I was very close with him. We had uh, Hoi for two LAN parties, just me and him. I was very close to him. But after all these years, I realized Christian didn't like me. You know, we were very close, but I realized he was only friends with me because... It was suitable to him. Like, he never... 
like I always felt with this Christian, if I would have died, he wouldn't have given a fuck. That's what I feel about him. He was always like introvert and fuck the world. He was like a metalhead, you know, Ugh, fuck everyone. And I always feel like Miyota's just stressed out. Hey, you can't forget your friends, man. And I always felt like if I would have died, he wouldn't have cared. Something like that. And now we get to the last one, the, the, the worst of all. But I don't dream about him. I know you're watching this maybe, Christian, but I'm not dreaming about you. And then there was the last Christian. Christian was a punk. He was like emo punk, right? The girls were into him. He always had colored hair. He was he was listening to punk rock. His parents were very rich, I remember. His parents were ultra rich, man. And he was this punk guy. And I would always be very good friends with him. And the, the thing with me and this guy were, we were always one month friends, and then one month hated each other. And it was, looking back, it was so childish, man. I remember we would be the greatest friends doing everything together and then we play dota 2 and i do a mistake in dota 2 and then he wouldn't talk to me for one month and and now i'm adult enough to see what a fucking idiot he was like i would not gank the right way and he was just fuck you tom i'm not talking to you for a month and and he was a big cunt like i remember i remember a story it was in 11th class i told him something very private i'm not telling you what it was i told him something very private right and i'm going to class right and then the girl the the number one bully girl you know the girl the girl that is like, I'm so cool, <laughs> all the others are in the You know that girl? Like a cheerleader girl, even though she looked like a trash can? Eileen was her name. She she tips on my back and she tells me the secret I told the guy. He's like, Tommy, is that your secret? Whoa, loser. And I'm like, bro, you told her my secret? So yeah, me, me, me and him, I, I hate this guy. I hate him to death. He was always a fake friend, always, man. He was, he only, he's a perfect example of, he was only a friend with me to... Like, Christian always needed me to feel better about himself. He always looked at me, and he was like, I'm so much better than Tom, and that he loved that. He's richer, better grades, more women. He was always more successful than me, right? Uh, he would always be better than me, and he always looked down on me. And then, some years ago, it finally ended. And, and this is where I'm arrogant, and... Like, two years ago, he realized that I'm a streamer. He didn't know because Tony, who he was also friends with, is becoming my second editor. And he texted me. He texted me live on Twitch, right? And he was like, how are you doing, Tommy? We should meet to become friends again. And I just said, bruh, bruh, suck these big nuts, man. You always look down on me. And now the ginger that you always look down upon makes fucking four times your money, man. Fuck you. I know it sounds arrogant about money, but I'm like, fuck you, man. You looked down on me for 26 years, and now I have these massive fucking balls, you little bitch, man. I hope I see him one day in the street. I'm just gonna be so toxic towards him, man. Like, fuck that guy. And now, to finish that story, you see that with the six main friends I had, it was a lot of fake shit, a lot of meh. Which is, I think, why I dream about this shit. But I'm in a good position now. I feel great now. I feel amazing. I have the best friends ever, the best girlfriend ever. The friends I have left are amazing. I only have three real friends now. Tony, my brother, and another guy. You don't know him. And these guys are just loyal, man. We will go to war together. I call them. They're here in a second, bro. This is true friendship, you know? These people, they, they don't use you to feel better. Nothing, man. Just real friends. And I feel very good about that. I'm in a good position. So, yeah, that was a little story time about friends. I guess the moral of the story is don't waste don't waste time into friendships where you know they're not real, you know? The third person is Chet. Rip Marconi? Marconi is my brother and friend and, and, and lover boy, but I don't meet Marconi in real life. Like, you guys, you guys are awkward, man. Like, me and Marconi, we don't play billiard every Saturday, you know? Ah... So yeah, that was that story. And I think that's why I dream about this shit. But that's annoying. I feel like, you know, I, I, if I could talk to my dreams, I'd be like, why are we doing these dreams? Like, fuck all of this. Like, what's important is that after all these years, I'm, I'm, I'm in a great position now and they can all just suck it. Everyone can suck it. Everyone who ever looked down on me, pff, fuck them. Who cares? <clears throat> And as arrogant as it sounds, it's just the truth of life. It it just gladdens me that I know that certain people like this Christian look at my stream and they see... You know what they see? They see this right here, man. Look at that. 5,000 subs, man. And that shit means so much to me. It's toxic, but it's the truth. The people that look down on me, 
they click on the shit, they Google my name, and they see a 5,000 sub streamer, man, with massive bolts all across their fucking forehead. And they can all fuck themselves, bro. Anyway, let's go back. Uh, let's check which achievement we do. We could do um, a big campaign, or we just get the Lithuania achievement real quick. For example, right, uh, Tony made the second channel, Tommy K. Wipe. Like, let me tell you, let me show you who Christian is, man. That little bitch. Uh, we have a second YouTube channel, right? Thank you, uh, Crowden, called Tommy K. Wipe. And Tony is my editor there. Tony uh, has always been a good friend of Christian. And Christian dislikes every single video because he thinks it's funny. Every single video on Tommy K. Wipe, which Tony works on, he dislikes that because that is his humor, man. Just a little cunt boy, man. Hope I see him on the street one day. <clears throat> Anyway. Anyway, anyway. That's right, him removed the dislike button. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. You're still ginger, though? Yeah, I'm still ginger, though, but at least I have good friends, good money, and a good girlfriend as a ginger. And that's what you should do in life. You should put yourself in a position where you can fucking sleep at night. Actually, you know what you should do in life? You know what the truth is about life? You should put yourself in a position where you shit on your enemies. You need, everyone has enemies in life. You have enemies. Put yourself in a position where you shit on them in every department. That's what life is, is, is about. It's about being better than your enemies. That's what life is. Fuck happiness and... No, you shit on your enemies, bro. Thank you, Mark. Mark. Thank you. Anyway. Um, hmm, the Lithuania achievement could be done really quick. And then we have to actually... And then there's only really, really big achievements left. This one is easy, people say. And then only hard ones are left. So how do you do this? The world isn't just hate. You're right, yeah. <laughs> but I think, dude, this is this. Lisa knows this, right? I'm a human being that's completely driven on hate towards my enemies. And it's unhealthy. It's not cool. I'm not saying that's cool. But a lot of things I do in my life is just to, 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 to shit on my enemies. That's just the truth. It's very toxic and stupid. But the reason I work so hard on the stream in my life is that I always dream that my old school enemies from school Google me one day and they see I'm better than them. That every I have such a better life than them. It's a very toxic thought, but this is kind of my number one motivation in life. True story, man. True story. <clears throat> Tanatuva? No, no, let's get the easy one out. It's like what David Goggins says, take their souls with success. <laughs> yeah. Tell me you're my enemy now. <laughs> uh, Formula Fame Commonwealth and go to war with Germany and then they and when they demand Mamel. Okay. Wait a second. Go Commonwealth? Go to war with Germany when they demand Mamel. And join Russia, right? That should be easy. That's this is the final easy achievement, I think, guys. I think that's the final easy achievement. Should you play historical for this one? You should probably should, right? You probably should. So Germany actually demands, right? Thank you, class war. But doesn't the Kaiser also demand Mamel and the Kaiser is weaker? I'm not playing Final Fantasy XIV. Like, I remember Final Fantasy XIV. Me, Tony, and Christian played Final Fantasy XIV. And I, I leveled a bit ahead. I was like five levels ahead. And Christian said, fuck Tom. He leveled ahead. And then we didn't talk for a month. I remember that shit, dude. And I remember his cunty girlfriend, man. They're married now with a kid. He had this girlfriend, man, from Berlin. Really cool. And she would always mob me. We would go to the beach, right? The friend circle. And then his girlfriend came. And she always said, what are you doing, Daywalker? Isn't the sun killing you, Daywalker? I remember that shit. But back then, I was too skinny and shy to defend myself. I remember that stuff. Complete trash human beings, man. <laughs> Kid's name is probably Taylor. That's probably August or some fucking mm, cunty shit, bro. Anyway. You always get bullied by girls? Well, not anymore. Not nowadays. Nowadays, all the girls are in my chat. 